Jay here for Stratford Paddock. That, of course, is Mr. Stephen Housen there. Uh, Manchester United drawing at the Vitality, two all, going behind twice, coming back into the game. There was a time when I used to get excited and buzzing about the fact we'd pulled it back when we looked like we are going to lose, and now it just feels a bit like, mm, whatever. Uh, Steve, what did you make of the game as a whole? Because, I mean, it doesn't really do much for us, does it? Well, yeah, it puts us seventh now. <laughs> Sorry, I stand corrected. want to talk about doing something. It does um, a lot for us. Did anyone have a good game? I'm going to say, and not just because he scored, I thought Bruno did all right. I thought, no, I thought Bruno did well. I don't know why I'm downplaying it all right. I thought he was decent. I don't think anyone else did. I thought he was the only one. I think, you know, outside of his goals, Jay, I don't think I would point to a great deal he did, to be honest. I thought he was at least getting himself about. He played some decent passes as well. I just thought, for me, when he got on the ball, it looked like he was a bit more on it than some of his teammates. It wasn't a fucking, an amazing performance by him by any stretch, but I thought... Especially compared to some of his teammates. I thought defensively all over the gaff. But, you know, listen, I've done all my review. You tell me what you thought of it as a, as a collective. What did you make of the, the performance by United? I, I feel like we don't know what we're doing. With or without the ball. Yeah. And that's problematic, I think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously. Oh, yeah. All right. Apart Michael from Owens that. Up, has it? Apart from yeah, apart, apart from office. that. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, you know, not having a fucking scooby do what's going on is problematic, isn't it? Mm, yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah. Glad I tuned in now. Um, I don't know, Jay, because there's a lot that I think Eric Ten Hag's been hit with and there's a lot that I think he's had to deal with and there's a lot that um, I think he's done well with and there's a lot that I think he carries the cam for. And there's a phrase, don't know where it emanates from. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility. And I think some of the performances this season haven't been Eric Ten Hag's fault, but it is his responsibility. And it's his responsibility to fix some of the things that I am seeing week in, week out. Someone's just commented on my video there before. Luton have had like 80 some shots in the last five games conceded and they've played like fucking Liverpool City and Arsenal or something like that in, yeah. in that sort of time period. United have had 134. 134? And, um, it doesn't seem real. I'm... Nah. It doesn't. When you say that, like, that's a stat that seems made up and I know it's not. But I don't know. The, the, the issue I've got, Steve, is as a fan, like my default setting is back the manager, defending look at the shit show he inherited, all that stuff, tired of sacking managers all the time, give him a bit of time, like, remembering last season, which I thought was a real positive one, all that stuff. But it's hard, bro, when I'm watching week in, week out, football that is difficult to, to, to get your head round and this and results that are just so deflating constantly. It's just difficult, man. It's hard. It's hard to defend What's it. What's the definition of madness, Jay? Uh, repeating the same mistake and expecting different results. Okay, so... We haven't got another back four to play. So yeah. the the, okay. the illusion of decision is removed in that. Fair enough. The midfield three. I said this in my own review, but I'll repeat it for those who no, haven't seen on. it. The midfield three. Yeah. I know what we're going to get from Casemiro and Bruno and Menu in that orientation. I'm not saying that you can't. I, I actually want in my preview, I was like, can we just move Bruno back as an eight and have him playing the same line as Maynou because I think he's got the work rate. And I think actually when you move him further back, he, I think he's got the vision and the ability to be able to dictate from deep. We've seen him do it once. Um, which, to which someone commented like, he's only done it once. And I was like, oh, you could say it's worked every time we've tried it. Um, <laughs> but yeah. when you put them in this orientation, you know what you're going to get. And this forward three with that back uh, midfield three has actually played quite a lot of football together yet we yeah. don't have a single recognizable pattern we don't have a single recognizable sort of method of entry into the final third or the box i cannot defend I, I, all of the things that he's had to deal with has been an absolute shit show right yeah i agree that aside and the the sheer number of injuries does not get factored in anywhere near enough but when I'm seeing a consistent forward six start and I know what I'm going to see from that forward six and I don't see an attempt to just 
let's try Bruno further back. Let's try maybe Mount instead of Casemiro. Just we know Casemiro. We know Casemiro's been on just fumes or whatever it is that he's doing at the moment. Yeah. Can we not see Ericsson? Can we not yeah. see Mount? Could we not see Ahmad instead of either Rashford or Garnacho? Can we not see an attempt to do something different? Because we are doing the same thing time and time again. And guess what? We're getting the same result. Now, whether or not that means three points and a victory or a draw or a defeat for Manchester United, the result is the level of performance. And the type of performance has been fucking identical. The yeah. only thing I know is United are going to be dog shit transitionally, give up a fucking right load of shots. Possession could go either way because yeah. we've seen us hold the ball and we've seen us not hold the ball. But the way we create chances is erratic and the way yeah. we defend stuff is fucking laughable. And the only thing that's consistent is there's probably a penalty in the game. Outside of that, I have no fucking clue what's going to happen. So why are we trying to see the same thing all the time? Why can we not see? Do you know what? I'm a fucking start. We are yeah. desperate for something different. Yet the same thing happens. And that's when people start to lose faith. And I saw it today in all of the different WhatsApp groups that I'm on. So many people went, nah, fuck him off. Yeah. That haven't. All season, people have been going, we've got to be better than that. We've got to be better than that. We've got to be better than that. Today, they snapped. And it wasn't on the ass kickings that we've had recently. It was a fucking draw away to Bournemouth. Yeah. And people went, ah, fuck it, go. Because mm. you're seeing the same shit all the time. You can't just keep serving up the same thing and think it'll just magically fix itself. It ain't going to magically fix itself. You, to, you actually have to go in and tweak something and see what the, the outcome is. Because I know... I know how Casemiro's going to be. I know he's going to fucking be too high in midfield and Manu's going to be too high or he's going to be dragged over to one of the sides and then we're just going to get broke on. And Bournemouth are, are less than ideal team to play because they've got some fantastic wingers that are just direct and pacey and that's a fucking problem. But do something different. Do something different we can point to and go, there we go. You know, last season we were begging out for, can we learn... Like, we were so bad on the road. Can we learn? This year, we haven't been so bad. We, I mean, on some aspects, we've been worse. But, like, we, we started to see a difference in some of the big games. We looked like we were having a bit of a fucking go. And there was changes and tweaks, and it was it was developing. Yeah. Whereas, at the moment, I don't fucking feel like we're developing. And we have had... All right, yeah, look, the, the 900 fucking combinations of a back four does nobody any good it doesn't no. but the forward six is virtually the same week in week out so show me a pattern show me a change show me something or someone needs to take a fucking seat and give somebody else the opportunity do you think do you think this manager can turn this around now or do you think this has gone on too long because you're saying insanity. You're using Willers like, you know, what's his, repeating the same mistakes, expecting different results. We've been here, it's not just these last seven games where we've had one win. It's been pretty much all season we've had some, you know, a lot of issues. And yet, yes, everything you mentioned, the back four and all the rest of it and the injuries and stuff, but it does feel like he's putting faith in something that he should have abandoned ages ago. And I'm, I'm wondering, is he, is he going to do that? Is he going to change it? Or is he just going to stick with it now because he's almost come too far, if that makes sense? Do you have any faith he's going to turn this around or change his ways like you said he needs to? Luke Shaw and Martinez would be monstrous for us. Um, and arguably Varane would be monstrous for us at the moment. But they don't score as goals. No. And I... As much as defending starts from the front, attacking can start from the back. That's true. The consistency in the team selection of players that have been consistently underperforming tells me otherwise. And quite often as you approach the end of a manager's term, you get a lot of this sort of questioning of, the fuck is he doing? Yeah, yeah. People start to use the words like uninspiring. Mm. People start to use the word like favourites. <laughs> and I don't think he's got favourites necessarily. Um, although I think the way he overplayed Anthony through his form might suggest otherwise. I, I don't know. 
I, I don't know because last season what we did was great. You know, it, it's it. You know, Jurgen Klopp is going to have absolutely change the narrative of what we did last season, this season. <laughs> um, and Ten Hag's yeah. win rate is still fucking strong, to be honest with you. Still very strong. But people want to see, and I, and I, you know, and I know Sir Alex Ferguson absolutely went fucking up and down, left, right, all over the show before he started to. It took him like five years before he was like sixth to second and we actually made like consistent progress that we built on. It was kind of like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, mm. one step back, or two steps back, two steps forward, one step back. Like it was a bit erratic first few years. And then we got to the stage in 92 where we were solid, weren't we? Yeah, but we solid, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. Yeah. If you'd have fucking played all night, we wouldn't have scored. There was so many United nils now you'd you'd struggle to beat us, but we'd also struggle to beat you. You know, if you scored, you're probably going to win. If we got one, we might not get two. And I always remember Fergie talking about you know, titles are won by defenses, games are won by forwards and goals. At the moment, don't score enough goals, and we concede far too many. And when I look at what is is in front of us. I don't see us move. If if we were just fucking boring, Jay, right? Yeah. Because that's one thing I can say that United aren't. If no. we were just fucking nil nil in the gaff up, you go, well, do you know what? An extra midfielder, maybe an overlapping fullback. This team can go from nil nil to one nil, and one nil yeah. wins your leagues. But this team isn't doing that. This team's no. going from fucking absolute roll of the dice, what the score is every week. So I, I, and I think the the excuse or the 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 mitigation of like the entire back four not playing is real. Yeah, I think that's fa it's, it's a real thing. But there's still got to be more than we're seeing. You know, it, I, I'll, I'm never one that's going to sit here and scream. This manager has to go. But no, I will won't. sit here and demand that this manager improves what we're seeing on the pitch. Because I think he's capable of improving what we see on the pitch. Now, during the week, I watched a lot of football. It's not like you. I've seen some really good individual performances. The young kid at Barcelona, the centre half, I thought that was one of the best performances that we saw this week. And I, I watched uh, the Leverkusen West Ham game. Um, it's probably like the fourth or fifth time I've caught them. I haven't fucking caught them probably since before Christmas since they started to like really get the hype and go on this super long fucking run. And if you had to say anything about Leverkusen is they are coached. Yeah. And they play like they are coached. There is specific patterns. It's weird because you know how they're going to try and build up their attack. Good luck fucking stopping it, right? Yeah. Everyone's scouted them now. Like no one's coming into a Leverkusen game going, yeah, it's whatever. Everybody knows how they're going to play. Everybody knows what the threats are. It's really, really interesting to see how it moves on for them next year and progresses. But right now, you look at them and you and like they absolutely... I mean, it took them to the deep late in the game to actually get their noses in front against West Ham. But West Ham were hanging on from about yeah. 10 minutes in. Yeah, like yeah. It was, it was going to be a smash and grab, if anything, from West Ham. And they had a bit of an outlet because, look, pace is real, right? Pace is the great equalizer you're either fast or you're fucking not you can't really train someone to just be like two seconds quicker at the 100 meters so if you've got pace and you can play it into the right areas a fast winger is going to trouble any center half and any fullback in the world it's just the way it is yeah but even that they just kind of snuffed it out and they played with such a, a, a composure and a calmness and it was a like they didn't panic and as the game's getting to the, the, the 80th minute, they're at home. The crowd isn't getting on their backs. The crowd's just having a fucking good time. And eventually they break the deadlock. And a couple of minutes later, they, they, they manage to pull another one out. And you just think, they look so coached. If I had shown you a Manchester United game at the moment, and then another Manchester United game, and another Manchester United game, show me the coaching. That's an, that's the issue. I, I want to just. I agree with everything you're saying, there, and it's depressing to be honest with you when you're watching some of these other clubs in Europe, seeing how far off we are, and where even the clubs that you know. I'm not talking about just the the Manchester Cities or whatever, or the, you know the the 
Bayern Munich. Or ones that haven't broke the rules. Or haven't broke the rules or Bayern Munich or whatever. Clubs like you say, like, you know, by Leverkusen and teams like that, where they've got a manager who's been in the job, you know, not forever. And he's got them playing a way that's effective and entertaining. And, 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 and flip it, go to someone like uh, an Atletico Madrid. Yeah. Um, I only caught the highlights of that game. Um, but you know, athletic commentary. I love watching them because it's mad watching a team almost hypnotized to just fucking raft. Like, yeah, good luck breaking them down. They, do you know what? They are well happy being sat in a low block, twenty yard from outside their goal. They're like, "Don't give a fuck." Yeah. And then they get yeah. on the ball and they can play. That's yeah, such a yeah. dangerous team that they can. Oh, oh, you're gonna give us the ball? All right, cool. Take a fucking seat. Watch this. Oh, you want to have the ball? All right, cool. Break us down. That's it. That's it. They are and a coached team. Course, Barcelona man. look a bit off the cuff. PSG are completely off the fucking cuff. Yeah, they, Real Madrid are totally that. off the cuff. They just got to wait for Big Carlo to put his hands on his hips and pull the fucking eyebrow off and then they go and win a game. <laughs> like, yo, know, watching the teams that look coached at the moment, Arsenal look coached. This is the horriblest thing I could think of saying, but they do. They're, oh, yeah. they're really fucking hard to create chances against and they fucking create chances at the other end that they look coached. How would you break them down? They have about fucking five shots a year conceded, not the yeah. hundreds like us. You know, there's teams out there that are looking coached, and maybe it's like Arteta went on like a one win in 10 or 12 or some bullshit like that. I didn't watch Arsenal enough in that time to know if they looked as fucking drastically bad as we do right now. No. But they stuck with him through that, and it I didn't persevere and it changed. So maybe it's. Maybe it's a personnel issue. Maybe it's a, a player attitude issue. You can have one fucking bad apple in a changing room and completely bollocks up your changing room. And you don't know who that is. Just one final one, bro. If Eddie Tanag was to get sacked, let's say in the summer, they just went, look, you're not the right guy. Would you be gutted about that? Or would you be like, that seems reasonable? I'm not saying you want him gone. I'm just asking, how would you react if, if, if Ineos went? Yeah, I'd be gutted about it, I think. Yeah. I don't like, like, look, clubs have to stand for something. Yeah. Who they are as, as people and as organisations. And Manchester United, to me, I always, Joe said this a few years ago, and um, and the Glazers have steered us away from this in, in many ways. Manchester United always felt like a force for good. Yeah. Now, if you support anybody else in English football, you'd be spitting your tea out right now. That's just because you're jealous. Realistically, what did Manchester United do? We we basically fucking grew the England team every fucking generation. Yeah. We are we have had an Academy player in the first team every single match day since nineteen thirty eight. Yeah. We um have never had a sugar daddy. No. Nope. We have always spent what we earn. Yeah. And we've played some of the best down football that this country's ever seen multiple times yeah and and haven't broke the rules so a, yeah it's a rarity for a team in manchester manchester united or and like people like sir bobby charlton and sir matt busby and what they stood for and what they therefore extrapolated onto the club and what the club stood for uh and, and the cosmopolitan aspect of what that created for this club the club loved by the whole fucking world yes it's mancunian based yes manchester is important to us but we are the world's club that that always felt like united were a force for good in world football and that's changed no it has and and one of the reasons that's changed is is the sacking of managers and it might seem like such a small thing and it's fucking 12 year olds in the comments right now screaming standards but you'd have sacked Fergie. Oh, mate, Screamers. there's no way he'd have survived that. No you'd way he'd have survived that run he was George on. George Graham. 100%. 100%. Well, I, think, I think patience is a massive virtue and no one's going to get seven years of finishing 11th and 13th and it's second in between those, like Sir Alex did. Um, but maybe that's wrong. And maybe we should allow people to completely stripped back the club and Ineos seem like they know this fucking thing needs work I think they'll be asking I, I think if you were if you're Ineos now and you look yeah. going into this summer what you're going to have is you're going to you've got a restoration project going on 
in your house, right? Yeah. If you get a new bathroom done, you can go and shower at the fucking gym or at your mum's or whatever, right? If you try and do your bathroom in your kitchen at the same time, and your front room, and your bedroom, and your fucking stairs, there's nowhere for you to sit in your house. Right. And if one of them goes wrong, it could fucking crack off to all of them going wrong. And maybe a maybe a different fucking way of looking at it is, you know, they, they're going to be playing, they're they're playing fucking poker at five different tables at once, and you're trying to win every hand. Yeah. You take your eye off the ball of of one of those tables, you're going to lose that table. Yeah. You know. And, and every single decision that they make, whether it's a point and a CEO, there's an element of risk. Was Barada carried by City or is he actually really good? We'll, we'll find out in about six months, right? Yeah. Is Dan Ashworth really good or has he been carried by other people in the roles that he's gone to? We'll find out in about six months. Is Jason Wilcox all that or is he a fucking blagger? We'll find out in six months, right? All of those decisions, you're asking to roll a six every fucking time. Like, this one needs to be... Because... This fan base is so fucking ready to just wig out at anything. Yeah. If Barada turns out to be a fuckwit, or if uh, Jason Wilcox is recommending that we bring in fucking Frank Lampard as our manager, like, you can't take your eye off any of these, and you, you're going to ask for so much to go so right. I think you're only going to get one maybe two plays of the new manager card under Ineos before people start thinking you haven't got a fucking clue what you're doing yeah so why would you waste that a, a, a turn on a manager this summer when the structure that you've already admitted is not good enough for any manager is not going to be in place or the the revamp structure is not going to be in place why why not spend the next 12 months building the right structure identifying the right manager and then if ten Hag isn't able to turn it around the question marks and and potential upsetting of fans that you would have right now won't be there in 12 months if he doesn't turn it around if you have another 12 months where you maybe don't improve from 7th or you, you, you end up near Chelsea the decision will have been made yeah no I get that I do and if it's up to me I'm one of them who's like you. I'm like, look, United still means something like that to me. It does. And I can stomach it. I can. Even though it's been difficult, and I know I said it earlier, it's hard to watch, it's hard to defend it and all that. I could, if they went, look, new CEO, new director of football, but some new signings, some signings who've been, you know, players coming back from injury, but we're sticking with Tanag for another 12 months. I could stick with that. I could stomach that. I just don't know whether Ineos are going to think like because no one seems to know and even when we speak to journalists me and you speak to a lot of journalists speak to a lot of people who you can trust you know actual journalists yeah, not people, pretend people ones. don't know no one's, no. no one's putting their hat on yes he'll go no, no one's putting their hat on yes he'll stay it's very much up in the air and maybe that's what it should be yeah it's weird isn't it because at United we've always known stuff like you've, yeah and we have haven't we me and you've had conversations months before things have happened we've both had a, heard off different people the same thing because it, it turned out to be true but this time, it's like, listen, I'm not hearing anything. I'm hearing people have theories, but when you're actually chatting to him off the record or what, you know what, have you had a tickle on this? And it's like, Ineos are actually acting like grown-ups and keeping it to themselves, which for Manchester United is a really weird way of working. And maybe you know that's an I think indication. That was half the issue with fucking forward. Wuwara and Murta, right? <laughs> I, I think that they went to the fucking, the cooler, if you like, and just fucking stood there having a sip and asked everyone their opinion. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's how it leaked. That's how idiots like us ended up fucking yeah. finding out what was going on. Because they would ask people that we know. And they would be like, uh, what do you reckon if we got rid of him and brought in, I don't know, Jose Mourinho? Yeah. Like, and you'd be like, you what? And they're like, yeah, we're, we're probably going to do that. You what? Like, it's like, you'd, yeah, you'd have, have the same, you know, me and you'd chat or whatever, and you'd have the same stories from different sources. And it's like which tells not... me that they were probably unsure of themselves a little bit loose lipped and yeah. they were probably fucking going around caught in public opinion which yeah. is why we we were publicly in for fucking everybody that was up for sale every transfer window and end up signing like one percent of them yeah because you're not going to sign 400 players 
No. But, you know, I, I think that was the, one of the fucking major dramas with them. Take me back to 2007, and it's uh, United have signed this fucker and this fucker, and then you have to Google who they are. Like, take me back to that. Shocks. Take me back to a fucking... I mean, it won't take happen now because there's no journalist work there, but someone telling me the they end of yeah. got a scoop on Dwight York fucking signing. Andy Cole Christina. signed. I found that out on the off the MEN. Imagine that. Take me back Jay, to those days. Uh, my... My finding out of Dwight York feels like it was in a 1920s New York movie. You know, the guy like, Evening News Final, Manchester United signed Dwight York. I'm like, you're not paper Shane. What the fuck are you talking about? Like, that's not real. No, that happened to like 14 year old Steve. Like, how is that a thing, man? Yeah. You fucking no, kids insane. don't know today with your Twitter and your fucking apps. Like, they had to walk yeah. the streets like, in the that rain. Was your, that was your clickbait on them boards. That was your yeah. clip bit on them buzz. United signed Man, star right striker. Like what? Yeah. Like what? Who is it? You got to buy, you got to spend a 20p to buy the, the paper. Like, fuck that. I was knit one. Yeah. Yo, those were the days. None of this clip bait, actual nonsense. But we'll see anyway. Bro, Steve, always a pleasure. I feel better after the chat to you. I don't know what it is. I think it's just having a little bit of a, not a rant rant, but just a chat and just putting things in perspective. Um, If you're not done already, go. Yes. Go on, son. Uh, go and check out Stephen Allison TV. Go and check out Stratford Paddock FC. You can actually watch some, you know, bit of joy there, bit of happiness Listen, going on. What I'll say is, when the highlights from today come out, you're gonna see yeah. 45 minutes of the best football. If you've watched United, the best football you've seen this season. Like honestly, 45 minutes of absolute 10 out of 10, just blown away with how good we were, and I've just ignored the second half. We won, but no. I won't bother with the second half. When just the lads have gone in the dressing room, just fucking high fived and fucked him yeah. right off. Is what they've done. Oh, we've won that. Sad just watch half then. Watch the first half, yeah. Don't worry about that. Uh, you heard the man. Uh, Steve, always a pleasure. Go and check out all the channels I've just spoke about. You know where to find me as well. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. That's me, Stephen Alson. I'm Jay Motte. This has been a review of the Bournemouth result. Thanks for watching.